everybody and welcome to another session of uh, Bigfoot Tales and today we're going to look at a uh, uh, delve way back into the past to uh, 1892 and we're going to head down to Kentucky where uh, supposedly a wild mon monster was uh, found and uh, captured. Um, <clears throat> now before we get into this, and this is from the, uh, uh, the Toledo Bee uh, published on uh, Saturday April 2nd of 1892. Uh, but before we get into the story, uh, let me first tell you that this story uh, supposedly tells of the capture of a, uh, uh, what they call a wild monster, but uh, the story refers to it as a gorilla. And uh, there's some, some different things here in this story, uh, news article, that uh, brings to mind the possibility of this uh, having actually been a, uh, a Bigfoot uh, capture, or a Sasquatch capture. Um... Number one, uh, gorillas are primarily a herbivorous, uh, uh, you know, creature. Uh, they don't go out uh, hunting for uh, animals to eat. Um, they they prefer vegetation, uh, primarily. Um, they will, uh, from time to time, uh, from what I understand, uh, uh, eat small, uh, you know, like mice or something like that, if they can get them, I guess. But, um, Gorillas are primarily considered to be herbivorous, um, but uh, uh, remember that as you go through the story. But uh, uh, let's go through this article. Again, it's uh, titled Roaming in the Woods. Um, it's subtitled A Wild Monster Found in Kentucky. 300 Men Affect His Capture. His career of devastation in Meade County is brought to an end by men. Uh, and this is out of Louisville, April 2nd. News of the capture of a struggle, strange and ferocious animal in Meade County a few days ago was brought to this city by Mr. Samuel B. Uh, Cerelius, who lives in that county, and was in the party that captured him. The animal first made his appearance in Meade County last October, and since then has been the source of no little annoyance to the citizens in general. He devoured dogs and young calves as easily as a cow can take in a turnip. Little children were afraid to venture out from home, and, in consequence, some of the public schools had to be suspended. The citizens at last grew tired of the marauder and resolved to exterminate him, if it were possible. Accordingly, a few days ago, a party of men, numbering about 300, got together with a view of hunting him down and ending his life. The men were all mounted and were led by Mr. Samuel Swift, who had with him <clears throat> his celebrated pack of hounds. There is a place about 20 miles below Braden Brandenburg where the Ohio River makes a sharp bend. Across this bend, at one point, the distance is only one half mile, while to go around from point to point is at about 17 miles. The neck of land included in this division was selected for the hunt, not only on account of its adaptation to the sport, but because it was one of the principal haunts of the what is it. The hunt was, the hunt was begun about 10 o'clock in the morning, and pretty soon the hounds were scattered in all directions. At noon, it became evident from the noise the dogs made that the, the beast was fighting. The hunters urged their horses forward, and sure enough, there he was, holding all the park pack at bay. Upon the appearance of the horseman, however, he gave up his defense and turned and galloped away. He was hotly pursued, and in a half hour, they brought him to the verge to a tall precipice and had him surrounded on all sides. It was thought at first that he would make a great leap for life, but he appeared to be more desirous of risking his life to the mercy of his pursuers and jumping from the towering cliff. The men closed on, in on him from all quarters, and the hounds bayed lustily. It was evident that the gorilla was soon to be brought to an end. A few minutes were spent in devising plans of procedure, but it was soon agreed that Mr. Smith should lasso him. Mr. Smith is a veteran cowboy and scout, and can wield the lasso with remarkable dexterity. He accordingly produced one that he had provi that provided for the occasion, 
and after a little cautious advancement and posing of his loop, he threw it about and succeeded in entangling the, middle, the animal about the middle. The hunters quickly dismounted and lent their aid in the struggle, and in a few seconds had the animal's feet and hands securely bound, and an iron muzzle buckled around his mouth. All this preparation had been made by Mr. Smith, who wanted the beast caught alive. He is still in Mr. Smith's possession, being heavily chained and carefully watered, although no accurate measure could be taken of him. It is estimated that the beast is fully seven feet in height. He is covered with long, rough hair and has a terrifying countenance. The news of his capture has created joy among the inhabitants of Bede County. Mr. Smith has not yet decided what he will do with the animal, but it's probable that we, he will sell him to some menagerie. And that's the end of the article. And again, this is uh, uh, from 1892. They called him a gorilla, um, which was uh, uh, becoming uh, well known uh, at that time across uh, this continent. Um, Basically, starting from uh, somewhere around uh, 18, 1845 or so, 1850, somewhere in that time frame, <clears throat> the gorilla became known worldwide as a, a species. Uh, there are two, two different uh, subspecies, the western gorilla and the eastern gorilla. Um, and while it, there is some variations of sizes, um, I'd have to do some research to, figure, to, to get some exact numbers, but um, make sure that I'm correct here. But uh, I, I believe uh, gorillas generally are going to be, if you get a big one, it's going to be maximum 600 pounds. Um, but uh, you're talking about a five foot tall, uh, possibly up to about uh, maybe 5'8", five, 5'9", five, 5'10", five, range, shorter than six feet, uh, actually. Uh, was considered a, a huge gorilla, um, but uh, this creature was uh, seven foot tall, had a, uh, a terrifying countenance, and long, uh, shaggy hair. Um, and also, uh, this creature um, uh, actively pursued meat as part of his diet. Uh, again, uh, as I mentioned before, I read the article that gorillas are pri primarily herbivorous. Uh, which means that they're primarily uh, uh, vegetation eaters. Um, gorillas have never been known to hunt down uh, a cow uh, and uh, eat it, um, which this uh, uh, creature uh, that they call gorilla from uh, uh, Kentucky uh, was known for doing. Um, so my opinion is that this quite possibly was a, a Bigfoot capture. Um, I tried to do a little bit of research to find out some follow-up of this. Um, haven't found anything out yet, but uh, perhaps I will, and uh, we can find out that uh, you know maybe somewhere around there uh, we might be able to find the remains of this uh, creature um, to find out whether or not it is a gorilla. Uh, my opinion is it probably wasn't because, uh, um, as the article states, he was fully seven feet in height. Um, and usually, when uh, in those days, when they used an estimate of fully uh, seven feet, that means that he was at least seven feet and probably a little bit more than that. Um, but uh, uh, he was covered with long, rough hair, and uh, he had a terrifying countenance. And these are some of the, uh, the primary uh, descriptive uh, terms uh, that accompany many uh, Bigfoot sightings. Uh, they don't give anything indication as to how big his feet were, uh, but he does make mention that uh, he actually had hands and not paws. Uh, so, um, you know, it, combining all of the elements of the story together with the, the creature the, uh, description, um, I'm going to guess that this story was actually about a, uh, a Bigfoot capture, not a gorilla capture. And again, it was from the uh, Toledo Bee in uh, um, 1892 interesting story. Um, hope you enjoyed the article and the commentary on uh, historic uh, Bigfoot um, articles that I've been sharing and uh, some of the uh, uh, legends and uh, folklore from uh, the deep woods of the, the North American continent um, and other parts of the world. Um, again, I hope you enjoyed uh, Bigfoot Tales and uh, come back for more and don't forget to comment, rate, and subscribe and uh, come back soon for more uh, 
Bigfoot Tales. 